Dog Works Radio is sponsored by Alaska Dog Works. Check out their website at alaskadogworks.com. You can support this podcast on patreon.com forward slash first paw media. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by First Paw Coffee Company, specializing in private label premium blend coffee. If you're serious about coffee, you should check it out. First Paw Coffee's passion is high quality, small batch roasted coffee. They take the extra time to taste and get everything perfect before they release new blends. They aim to bring you a cup of happiness each time you pour yourself some coffee. Find out more at ak.dog slash free and enter for a chance to win some First Paw Coffee prizes, a book from our collection and tote bag. One winner will be selected at random each month. That's ak.dog slash free. From First Paw Media, sponsored by First Paw Coffee Company, this is the Dog Driver Show. Visit our website at dogworksradio.com. Now here are your hosts, Robert Forto and Kurosh Parto. Hello and welcome everybody. This is Robert Forto for Mushing Radio and I am here with Destiny Keel. We are at the Great Lakes Sled Dog Association Expo in Northern Michigan and it's great to meet you here. I known your grandfather for a long time on Facebook. He and I have been Facebook friends for a long time, Jerry, but it's great to meet you. Destiny, can you introduce yourself and tell us who you are and what you're all about, please? Hi, I'm Destiny Keel, um, and I've been dog sledding for about 20 years. Um, I started off with two rescued Samoyeds. Uh, which is a long story going back on how I got started into it. My grandpa did some uh, work for Tom Edge, who was one of the most prominent dog sledders here in Michigan. He was actually one of the founders of the first club to get started in Michigan, um, Mid-Union Sled Haulers. Um, He was also a great supporter of the Great Lakes Sled Dogs Association. And beyond that, he also traveled into Canada and all over the United States racing. Um, so my grandpa met through him through work and did a project for him, got a kid sled that he was going to, you know, just use as a garden <laughs> plant or, you know, decoration never happened, ended up in the attic. Well, of course, you know, me being 10 years old, I saw it and I'm like, what is that? And they got it down and, and showed me it. Um, I went out on a ride, uh, with Tom Edge's granddaughter Katie Gerke and fell in love with it. Wow. Um, I still remember that first ride going out on that and coming back with a huge smile on my face and saying this is what I want to do. That's awesome. You know my daughter got started early as well and she ended up going and running junior. I did her out a couple of times and she's now out of it. She's close to your age, a little younger. But growing up mushing, it's a different lifestyle, isn't it? Oh, it much, it very much is. I mean, it, it's your whole life. I mean, your whole dedication is around those dogs. I mean, I was out of it for a couple of years, and, you know, I really wasn't happy. And I was thankful that I got back into it with um, a rescue. Uh, her name is Roxanne, and she's a half coon hound, half husky mix. Stubborn dog, full of energy as a puppy. And the only way I could get her to burn any energy was through, um, you know, running her. And so I started uh, learning a little bit more about the dry land and took her out on the bike to a couple of races, and we finished first. (laughs) Nothing wrong with that. (laughs) (laughs) There's that. And, um, you know, she absolutely loved it, and... Um, So we did that for quite a few years, and I eventually got another teammate for her, who was another rescue, Um, and she's a Suppola Siberian, and those two, I call them my A-team, because regardless of what happened, if I fell off, they'd stop and wait, and they never missed a beat, like, ever. That's cool. So you said you started with Samoyeds when you were a young girl. And now you're working with some of the best sprint dogs, at least in North America, that I'm aware <laughs> of. 
I would like to know that progression before we talk about the Cheswick dogs. What was everything in between besides these two dogs that you just mentioned? Was there a bunch of other dogs there? There was. Kind of a combination. Yep. So after, um, with the the Samoyeds, I was getting, you know, I started wanting to to progress a little bit and try, you know, new dogs. And my grandpa wanted to start running. So he took over the the team of Samoyeds. um, And uh, back then I was really grateful to have a lot of mentors that were willing to lend me some of their their dogs. Um, And so one of my first mentors, um, her name was Rhonda Tack. And um, she gave me her it was her B team at that time. Um, it was her older, older dogs because um, she had some younger, faster ones. And I loved the speed. And you know, then from there, uh, I had Brad Love and Sharon Love lend me some of their dogs, and I started placing. Um, and then I had um, De Kuipers. I borrowed uh, four dogs from DeKuypers, and they were actually mine for the season. And so I got to train them, and I got to race them. And from there, um, in Mush, I was placing. And so I still have the trophies that I placed with them. Um, I have the dates written. And, so how old were you when they were up? Um, with the DeKuypers, I was, that was 2009. So I was a senior in high school. Okay, so about 11 years ago. Yep. Yep. So then uh, after that, is that when you took your break shortly after there? Yep, I went to college um, and still, yeah, I didn't ever figure out what I wanted to do. So. Okay. Still <laughs> I thinking did. about it. <laughs> I, well, actually, the job that I'm in, I'm, I'm perfect for and I love it. Um, it is uh, trades. I do uh, um, commercial plumbing estimating. Oh, cool. And I, I love plumbing. I know it's the weirdest thing in the world, but I love it. Okay. <laughs> it offers its own unique challenges yeah. every day. Yeah. So. So now you're working with the um, the Cheswick Kennel, based out of right here in, in Michigan, and top uh, open drivers, uh, Fur Rondi, the whole nine yards, uh, kennel partners with a good friend of mine, KP. And that's the reason why we're here is to pick up a couple of those dogs. But can you, for folks that don't know anything about those dogs and sort of that line, because they've been, they've been mushing since the 70s, I believe. Mm-hmm. What can you tell me, at least from a historical perspective, of that line of dogs compared to what you're used to? Um, the genetics. Lori has just... She has conquered pretty much the genetics of sled dogs is all I can say on that. I keep telling her, I'm like, you need to write a book because the amount of knowledge that she has and the amount of knowledge she has about every single dog past what she has now is just phenomenal. And, you know, I really wish I could just take a whole year off and just stay up there with them and learn. Okay. Because... It's just, it's just amazing. So what type of dogs are they? What is the sort of the, the breakdown of them? And, you know, is it three-quarter hound? What is it? Well, she's got a couple different breedings right now. Um, I do have um, a more higher percentage hound that was a breeding done um, a couple years ago. And we just did a breeding um, this year that I'm partnering with Cheswick's on um, with the Desert Saluki. Um, this will be, I think, a three-gen generation um, from the Zeba that Parto had. Okay. What is this Desert Saluki? Uh, I hear a lot about it. I'm, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a distance guy, expedition guy. I'm familiar with Salukis. You know, they usually have this long mane yeah uh, kind of look like horses almost yeah uh, pointy nose what is this desert saluki all about so from what um kind of what i've, I've listened to cheswick talk about and mandy collins it's to um it's the heat resistance and the speed okay um and so then what she does is she you know 
breeds the desert saluki to you know one of their top notch alaska or euro hounds yep. and through the generations they try to pull back a little bit more on that saluki but still try to keep that heat resistance and the speed but still bring in more for the undercoating to be able to withstand the cold winters okay that's very cool you know for folks that are listening uh, most of them are just pet owners, but sled dogs, and in particular high caliber sled dogs, are some of the most genetically diverse in terms of, of concentrated for a purpose dogs yeah. in the dog world. You know, they, they're bred for a very specific purpose. Unlike a German Shepherd, you know, of course, they're, they were bred for, you know, uh, police work and that sort of thing, but now they're therapy dogs and service dogs and great companion dogs and all that. But the sled dog's a different animal, isn't it? It is. But you also got to look at a lot of the dogs that are being bred now, too, are also being used for other dog sports as well. Mm-hmm. Like my, the Cheswick dogs that I own also do weight pull. Um, I saw that today here at the... Yep. Um, and for me, I like doing it because it it, it targets different muscle categories. Yeah. So it, and at, when it's warmer out... They only go 16 feet, so it still gives them that workout. It still helps them maintain that muscle tone yep. that they need to race without, you know, the overexertion and the heat exhaustion. And the mental stimulus as well. Yeah. Being involved in, in doing something, competing yep. or whatever. So with this high caliber dog that you're involved with now, what are your plans? Um, I'm not quite sure yet, to okay. be honest. I'm just having fun doing it. Like, I, I truly do. I love racing, but... You know, this this year is really the first year I've ever been really competitive. Okay. Um, this is the first year I've ever signed up for ISDRA um, and have really started racing for points um, and started running in the pros, um, which I was really surprised at that I my first sled race um, with Glista, I came in third place. Nice. So, <laughs> so are your... Are your down the road dream something like North American or Rondi or I would something like that I, I mean, would really way down I would love to yeah um if I don't know if I will be able to get there by myself okay <laughs> it might be something that I would have to partner up with you know Chesix on and see if I could make it up there with them and borrow a couple okay. know, dogs so with these guys you said you're just really getting into this competitive portion of it so can you kind of give us a day in the life of a competitive sprint musher what's that all about uh, you know is it uh hardcore training all year what what is what's the day like um well, i don't know how other people do it but for me uh like the big one is doing the weight pull um like i said with that there's it's nice and easy because you're just going the 16 feet just to keep those muscles intact so even when it's like super warm out um we can go into a cool cold pull barn and you know they can pull the weight to me and no the reason why I like doing that is number one um I can work a little bit more with them just working individually and not working whole as a team um and then you know on the cooler days we'll go for long walks where they'll um wear weighted vests or I just have them pulling a light chain behind them just so they you know they still are working the muscles, working the muscles. Um, I don't really do a lot of swimming with them, mainly because um, I, none of the Cheswick dogs like water. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, some of my other ones do, like my older guys and then my other one that I have that's on my main team. Um, she adores water. Um, but the other big thing is just keeping that mental stimulation with them. So we're constantly playing games. Um, I'm constantly working with them, um, with going to like softball games to get them used to the crowds, used to the noises, um, to, you know, just working on walking, like healing, sitting, laying down, um, good socialized dogs. Yeah. And what about for yourself? What are you doing to prepare for next season do you exercise do you run do you bike what i run um i bike (laughs) 
I should say I'm trying to run again. Right. <laughs> I had I had knee surgery uh, a couple of years ago, and so I had to sit out for a full season, and obviously it made me gain a lot of weight. So I've been trying to knock the weight back down, and um, I've been doing Canada Cross as much as I can at the races just to make me get out there and do it. Um, I've actually hired a, a running coach to help um, because I do love running. Um, I used to do it in, in high school, and I was pretty good, and so I just want to get back into it again. <laughs> so you're really stepping up your game in a lot of different ways, not only yourself physically, but with the dogs. But just last night, I saw that you got a brand new cart. Yes. <laughs> so, so a lot of things are changing. Tell us about that progression. What did you use before? And with this Cadillac that you have, you know, <laughs> the, these carts are winning races. We just heard the medal um, uh, presentation, and uh, a guy that runs one of those carts came in, well, I don't remember, second or third, Chris, yep. uh, with one of those carts. So tell us all about that. Um, well, I had, I started off with just, you know, the two rescues, and then I ended up with another rescue, and she's on my main team. Um, unfortunately, the two first rescues are retired now, and um, so I, I needed somebody to run with my other girl, and to so take it to a four dog class, which is kind of typical for <clears throat> for um, for cart racing. Yep. What type of cart were you using then? Or, or, I wasn't. I oh, was nope. I only had two dogs that were able to run, yeah. and so you I were just had, doing bike tour. I was doing bike tour. Okay, so this is a new class for you. Yep. Oh boy. <laughs> so a lot of big changes. So, yeah. I, uh, so have you have you ever ran in a cart race before? I have. Okay. Um, actually, the last two races of this season, I I did do cart. Okay. Um, I borrowed a couple of my friends' carts and and ran them, and it's like, yeah, I kind of want to do this, and I kind of need to do this because it's either I need to get a scooter <laughs> or a, a rig. <laughs> so you have been involved over your lifetime. You've been involved with juniors with one or two dogs i'm, I'm <laughs> sure you've been involved with kenna cross bike jor cart sled what is your favorite and why sled why the beauty okay you just you cannot even explain the beauty of just going down the trail this tree is just absolutely snow covered you know and sprint this is one reason why I, I dislike sprint racing, because I wish I could be out there longer. And uh, it's just it's just gorgeous. Yeah, the silence. Yeah. And all you hear is, you know, the dog breathing, you know, their feet hitting the snow, the runners. And you can just hear the, the birds, you know, the snow falling off the trees and hitting the snow on the ground. And... You know, when it gets that sun hits just right through the trees and there's just like a light snow mist and it's just, it's just Everything so Everything washes picturing. away, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah it you does. You just get out there and, and especially when you're, you mentioned uh, traveling slower. Yeah. When you're out there for miles. It's yeah. a different world for sure. So right before we went on air, you were telling me about a documentary that you're going to be in. Tell us about that. Where is it going to be aired? What is your role? And maybe just an overview of, of, of it itself. So the, the documentary is Heart Prints in the Snow. And it was actually released back in March. Um, and if you type in Heart Prints in the Snow, it should direct you to the links. You can buy it DVD or uh, download it online to watch it. Uh, this um, gentleman was uh, a junior with me um, his family raced uh, was there before I was able I was started into it and he's just he's so sick of all the negativity that's going on around dog sledding so he wanted to make a really positive film about it to kind of not really like show what it's about but to teach what it's yeah, about to important. really show um you know, what mushing means to mushers. So uh, myself and like four other uh, mushers that uh, I grew up with um, are in that, in that film. And each one of us talks about what it means to us. And it's, it's, it's a tearjerker. I'll, I'll just put it out there. It is. Yeah, I'm looking forward to watching it. <laughs> um, and we, we just talk about, you know, 
kind of how we got into it, the, the type of dogs that we use. Um, and he goes into explaining, you know, the type, like the Alaskan Malamute, the um, Siberian Husky, and, you know, where they originated from and, you know, why they were, you know, bred for that. And, you know, and then he kind of asks, like, if there's one thing that you could, you know, say to the dogs that you started with. And that's the tearjerker for a lot of us. Don't say it. <laughs> we, we want people to watch. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I, I can at least say mine. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> because it, it still rings true. It's, you know, for me, it's, I, I just want to say thank you. You know, and I, I, for me, I wish I could go back to those for my first two Samoyeds and do it all over again. Every single dog that I ran and trained and just to have that experience all over again to bring me to the point that I'm at today. I, I owe it all to them. Yeah. I mean, I really do. Yeah, those first dogs, those are special ones, aren't they? Mm -hmm. uh, they, they really teach us a lot. Not My, only about mushing, but about life, and especially yep. when you're 9 or 10 Patience. years old. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Troubleshooting when the sled takes off without you, right. and it's like, oh boy. <laughs> so, Destiny, before we go, I always ask our guests the same question, and you may have already mentioned it. I, I think you probably have, but uh, it is, if a new person's just getting involved, and this is a perfect place for it because there's a lot of new yep. people here, and they came up to you and they said, hey, I need one piece of advice before I start into mushing, whether it's cane across or Iditarod or sprint mushing or whatever, what would you tell that person? I would, I would tell them, let's find you a mentor. And then from there, we'll talk about, you know, what style you're looking to get into, you know, be a kennel hand at some of these bigger kennels, see what it's really about. Yeah. Because, you know, don't get a bunch of dogs and then say, oh, it's too much. You know, especially with the dry land, you know, you, could, you only need one or two dogs. If you find you're more comfortable with that, there are a lot of mentors that can help you decide, you know, what dogs you want to use. Um, and even with sleds, too. It's just... Yeah, uh, find, find a mentor. That's, that's a yeah. big piece of advice. And, and find the right mentor. You know, there are a lot of people mm -hmm. that want to help, but you want to find the mentor that's that's going to guide you in the class or, or the dog that you're interested yeah. in. You know, don't don't go for an Alaskan Malamute mentor if you want to one day, one day run in sprint dogs or whatever. I'm sure they have crossover <laughs> advice, but yeah. you want to find that right one. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, as long as you find an experienced musher, they can point you in the right yeah, direction. Okay. Yeah, especially with social media. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Speaking of social media, before we get to that, is there anything else you want to mention to, to the, the fan base that's listening? All good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You told us a lot. So, Destiny, how can folks follow you? Do you have a Facebook page? Or I do. Or on Instagram? Where can folks find you? Um, I'm available on Facebook. Uh, I also have a page, uh, you know, Fire Spirit uh, Team. Um, I usually post on there. I'll do live feeds of the races when I go to them. Not necessarily of the races I'm in. Okay. <laughs> the classes I'm in racing, but I try to get you know, at least videos of everybody going out because I know those are memories that, you know, a lot of people like to go back and look yeah, at. Yeah, of course. So what race are you going to, what race or races are you planning on this year? A lot. A lot. <laughs> and hopefully post-COVID and everything's going. Yep. Do you have any one in particular that you really have your eye on? Oh, I, I'm for sure going to Dottie um, over in Wisconsin and the UP200. I've had my eye on that one for the past few years and have been unable to make it. Okay. And I was going to it last year and then COVID shut it down. Nice. So now that it's up, it's up I'm gunning going. for yes. it. <laughs> well, very good. Well, thank you very much for joining us today on Mushing Radio. And we'll be sure to put all of the links on our show page and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Goodbye. From First Paw Media, this is the Dog Driver Show. We hope you enjoyed this podcast, and we invite you to subscribe in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. You'll find a link on the episode notes. You can tap or swipe on the episode cover art, and you can see some offers from our sponsors. You can support our show by supporting them. If you like what you have heard, we would love it if you could give us a five-star rating and tell your friends how to subscribe, too. Your hosts are Robert Forto and Kurosh Parto. 
Our producer is Robert Forto and created for First Paw Media. So earlier, you learned about First Paw Coffee Company. Now I'm going to tell you about its Trail Breaker Blend. First Paw Coffee Company's Trail Breaker Blend is inspired by our love of the Northern Lights, Frosty Paws, and Sled Dog Trails. How cool is that? The Trail Breaker Blend is a private label premium blend that was developed just for them. It's a medium dark roast from Central and South America, highlighting flavors of brown sugar, hazelnut, and plum. Be sure to go to ak.dog slash free and enter to win a bunch of cool prizes. That's ak.dog slash free. We're living in uncertain times. If there is one thing we can be thankful for, that is the recent pet adoption boom. Shelters are being cleared out, and that means you may not know much about your new best friend. Alaska Dog Works virtual and on-site classes are the best way for you to build a lasting bond and learn about your pup, new or old. From setting up a proper routine to learning the commands and much more, Alaska Dog Works provides you with the resources to develop your dog into one of the best. Right now, Alaska Dog Works has an exclusive offer just for our listeners. Go to alaskadogworks.com now and use promo code DOGWORKS and save 20% off your training program at the time of your booking. Visit alaskadogworks.com and use promo code DOGWORKS to save 20% today. That's alaskadogworks.com and use promo code DOGWORKS at the time of booking.